Anais here today to talk a little bit about how it is to be a survivor of trauma and sexual abuse. And um, she will talk to you. I will ask the questions, but she will talk to you out there about how uh, Rosen Method Bodywork can help issues that's kind of stored in the body from trauma. So, Anais, you are a teacher in the Rosen Method Bodywork and a practitioner, and you have uh, gained a lot of knowledge about trauma and um, Rosen Method Bodywork yes. during the years. Yes. So, yeah. most of my trauma wasn't sexual abuse. Um, it was about war. <laughs> um, yes, your own trauma yeah. history. Yes, you yeah. actually had a, a trauma history yourself. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, you know, sexual abuse is just a minor thing in my life. Mm -hmm. But I find that most of my clients, most of them, come with a, an abuse history, sexual abuse history. Okay, yeah, you yeah. never plan to work with people no. who have been sexually abused, but it just happened. Yeah, yes, I think yes, it's very and common. I, yes, I, I know it is. In <laughs> Denmark, we also have this large group yeah. and they're waiting this for them mm -hmm. to get help. Yeah. Yes, and this is kind of what we want to investigate a little bit further today because by your work with this uh, touch therapy. Um, I would like uh, that Rosen Method Bodywork is. I would like to ask how do you experience um, people with sexual abuse history can yes. profit from that? Can profit from it. Yes. Um, I think there's a huge range of how traumatic this history has been for people. Mm. Mm. Um, so I've worked from, f with clients. Um, who've had years of abuse and neglect. Hmm. Yes. Uh, clients who have survived and are functioning well in their lives now, but suffering inside. Hmm. And that those are the kind of clients Rosen uh, is actually helpful for, not the kind of people whose lives are still complete chaos. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And why is it so? Um, I ah, mean, yeah. Um, one response to trauma is to get too rigid and too controlled and too tight and too yeah, in your body. Like this yes. tight. Rosen method is an approach that intends to allow you, you know, to be safe enough to relax and open and have things emerge that you can process. That should only happen when your life can contain that. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. when you have enough support around you, when your life is stable, you're not homeless on the street. You know, yes. uh, yeah, you're not an abuser, you're, you're not right. addicted exactly. to something, to yeah. alcohol, to right. yes. Right. really bad patterns, really bad relationships. Right. Yes, so you so need yes. some support. When you do so Rosen, you should have taken care of those things mm. that you just named yes. in, if they were in your life. Yes, you, your yeah. experience said that, that the Rosen method, yeah. the touch, the yeah. special touch that we yeah. can do in yeah. Rosen method bodywork, it's, it works better. Yes. yes, it works better to help really integrate people. So, so I, I learned this really from my clients. Because um, in Rosen, what we do is put our hands on people in a way that's very gentle, and, and we call it a listening touch. It's not a manipulative touch. We're not doing something to people, which is why it's also very good for uh, sexual abuse survivors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more about really meeting them and listening to them. So it's a safer touch in that way than actually any other kind of body work I know of. Mm -hmm. um, in that, we're not manipulating. Mm -hmm. Okay, But mm -hmm. I've had clients who have survived by being so separated from themselves and so numb that they 
my initial touch, I ask them, can you feel my hands? And they say, no. Mm -hmm. They're literally numb. Mm. So yes. then we work with how do you wake up the body it yes. is so that it can actually feel that there's contact and feel that there's support, you know. So yeah. that's a process. Yeah, so, so it's like you have to do, uh, I guess, right. baby steps. Not, baby steps, yes. Not like... Maybe it's okay if you don't want to touch yeah. at the, your bare skin. At oh, all. of course. Yes. So that would be a, a possibility. Yeah. Okay. Traditionally, Rosen, you're um, taking clothes off and have a sheet over you. Mm. But, you know, that could be too much for mm. a lot of people. Mm. So yes. Keep that sheet on. Keep your clothes on. Yes. Um, um, until you actually experience safety. Safety is key. So that um, you can experiment with where to touch, how to touch. Mm. The client leads the practitioner yes. in uh, when it's okay and where it's okay. And then they, sometimes they find out it's not okay. So oh, then you back off. Mm. So they're actually uh, empowered to receive touch that is safe. And that in itself addresses the effects of trauma. Yes, yeah. yes. yes it can be uh, very hard to receive a gentle and, um, uh, and not wanting to do something with the body touch yes. when you have been used to the opposite right. and had very bad experiences right. with that. Your, right. your, your whole body is just not trusting anybody. Right. And sometimes I've had clients who, who need to experience that over and over again before they really believe that they're safe, this is something they're in charge of, um, and that uh, they can relax into it. Hmm. So how could, um, I, I guess there are many different types of sessions that you have, yes. because people who has been sexually abused is as different as everybody else in right. this world, I think. Yeah. Um, but, but have you experienced some maybe common things as well, or, or, or that it's actually possible? Is it possible to recover from scars that deep? Yes, I think the human body knows how to heal itself. And what we're doing is creating the right kind of conditions that allow that to happen. And when I say heal, what I actually mean is something in the nervous system. Um, what we experience as trauma survivors is fragmentation, right? Dissociation from parts of ourselves. Mm. Um, and healing means actual reconnecting of neural nets. Mm. Parts of the brain come back online and connect to each other that were mm. severed during the trauma. Mm. And the body knows how to do that, but it needs the right conditions. Mm. And the conditions, this is what I love about Rosen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Um, <laughs> the conditions are that you're in a place where your nervous system can relax and that you can take in another person's presence and love. And mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. uh, serious mm. about using that word because what it does is help the neural hormones that are attached with bonding and love the oxytocin, the you know, feel-good oh, hormone, they actually help neural nets regrow, neural connections reform. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, kind of physically. Physically, it's yes. a physiological thing. Yes, even though, yes, you don't try to fix or right. do something physical no. to the body. No. Just, the body just does it. The body does it because... Uh, because 
you're present in a state that actually helps regulate the state of the client. Mm. Yes, yes. So what we learn as a Wilson therapist very yeah. much is also to regulate ourselves and respect yeah. the boundaries um, yes. to, to establish a good connection. And You know what else I want to say? No? A lot of survivors <laughs> feel hopeless about getting over it. Hmm. Because one of the survivor patterns we have is to try to do it by ourselves. <laughs> And to think we should have, we should have by now, you know, right? Yes, yes. You're uh, used to doing yeah, because things like that yourself. The whole reason yes. you have trauma is because somebody didn't take care of you. Mm. <laughs> so now yes. you've had to take care of yourself, take care of yourself. Mm. But it's not possible to heal that kind of internal disconnect mm. without the attention of another person. Yes, and I, what I think as a trauma survivor yeah. as well, that you kind of continue what you actually learn from your parents not taking care of yourself. Exactly. You do that to yourself yes. again and again and, and again. again. So yes, until you break that yes. pattern. Yes. And that's what I say, um, healing from trauma isn't necessarily telling a story and certainly not reliving it, mm. it's stopping doing what you've done to yourself. Yes. To separate from yourself. Yes. I okay, agree. and it's simple things like stopping holding your breath, stopping mm. criticizing yourself all the time, <laughs> mm. stopping not taking in that another person is there with you, you know, whatever the survival patterns are, um, the practitioner brings you to a place that's safe enough for you to let go of it. And then what happens? Everything you've held back that you thought, if you let yourself feel, you're just going to die. Mm, exactly. Yeah. That shows up. And the practitioner helps helps you stay with it, stay with it, until you get to actually feel it. Might take five or 10 minutes. Mm. Yeah, but it's worse. Yeah. yeah, yes. And then it subsides and you feel a weight has been lifted, mm. right? Now, here's the thing about how trauma survivors are different mm. yeah. from each other, it, uh, depending on their history. Um, sometimes you do that one or two times, and and then a shift happens and it shows up in their life. And sometimes uh, that actually happened for a part of them. And the next week, they'll come back and mm -hmm. talk to you as if that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Because right. it's another part. Another part. Them. It's right. separate. What happened to yes. another part. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. Um, so that's why I, my image of trauma healing isn't from this point to this point in a straight line. Hmm. It's more like a, a spiral. And sometimes you feel right. like you're going backwards, but you're going backwards at a higher level. Hmm. Exactly. You know, With a little yeah. more consciousness of right. what's happened. Where you didn't have any consciousness Typically, when these situations were going on, you were just right. kind of paralyzed or so scared yeah. that you had right. to stiffen your body totally. And, and the other thing I do with um, survivors is honor the survival pattern, even though we're trying to let it let go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to. Yeah, because yeah, um, you. <laughs> understand what its function is and. Uh, give you what you need in order to let go. So I acknowledge that it is an important tool, yes. an important um, piece of this right. person that has helped this person again and again and again. And it's a safe ground. You know, so you get another safe ground that's better. I have, uh, I have clients who have names. I mean, I'm not talking about people who have multiple personality disorder or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about normal, all of us. <laughs> We all 
we can identify with having a little girl part or a warrior part or you know mm -hmm. yes we do have yeah. in our body that's normal right. yes yeah. yes so um and usually what happens is one part is trying to get rid of another part <laughs> <laughs> yes it's like this is devil and yeah. this is a good one right, you know? right. <laughs> yes who's gonna win <laughs> our goal is integration mm -hmm. <laughs> then what we do in rosen is uh, allow each part to show up mm -hmm. and they get to meet each other yeah. and they get to both be in the room at the same time without a war going on um, and being with that in connection with the practitioner mm -hmm. that's when the body can do its thing mm -hmm. and, and, and we don't even know how to make it happen it happens mm -hmm. but uh, while we're talking here, maybe it's a little bit difficult if you never tried Rosen as a body work before because it's it's not it's a um, it's very very safe environment. But you also go with the body, and when you work with the body like that, it's different than when you come to a psychologist and talk logically about your issues. You kind of step into another area of, um, I mean, you can't predict right. what's going to happen. Do you experience that can be a little bit overwhelming because that's one of the things that's happening when you experience trauma, that even though we make a safe environment when we do Rosen as a body work, we don't follow a certain plan, we just stay present with the so sometimes I have to reassure people hmm. that I completely trust their body and, and mine, hmm. and I trust the process. Uh, because there's wisdom that's more than our conscious minds know. Yes. And um, we are accessing it. So yes, we don't know from this moment the next moment, what we're going to do, what's going to show up. Um, but it's very safe to land in this moment mm. together and then wait to see what the body mm. gives us. Yes. Now, I'm there as someone whose nervous system is capable of regulating the nervous system of the mm client so that um, if something shows up that starts to get overwhelming I can stop them from getting overwhelmed yes exactly because yeah. we don't want to go there no. again you know that's right. uh, yes that's part of the definition right. of right. trauma that yes. you're getting overwhelmed and you don't right. have the ability to cope right. with that and overwhelm yes. and that's my definition of trauma by the way Mm. is any experience that you had that overwhelmed you when it happened and you didn't get help to process it so that it didn't so that it became PTSD mm -hmm. you know so um, trauma isn't just sexual abuse and hurricanes and car crashes and, mm -hmm. you know exactly it, it's, it can be little experiences that could not be processed when they happen. Mm -hmm. And therefore, some kind of separation inside yourself happened. Mm -hmm. You lost some part of yourself. Yeah. And it could be a little thing, little thing, like yeah. the teacher yelled at you when you were in third grade. Yeah. You were embarrassed. Yeah. Everybody right. was watching. And because yes. you made a purple horse with polka dots. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. you'll never do art again. Yeah. I or mean, you fell off the trampoline, I thought. I right. mean, that could also, you know, the, the body yeah. is kind of responding. Something very yeah. dangerous is happening. Nobody did this on purpose to you. Actually, you did it yourself, yeah. maybe. But it, and also, if you are the hospital, I think. Yeah. Yes. Right. So, so ma many very benign things mm -hmm. are actually uh, things that cause a separation in a child. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because they're not addressed. Hmm. And I 
think that the body reacts in the same way. I mean, of course, it's a whole other story if your parents are not taking proper care of you. Yeah. But the body kind of reacts in the same way. It's dangerous. I have to protect myself. Yeah. I have to, yes, cut off a, a piece of connection to, to the world and to who I am. And we are not really that aware of it in our daily lives, I think. It's just, yeah. It feels like it's normal. Yes, exactly. Okay. Guidelines that, so when the topic is uh, touch and sexual abuse, then um, how can this person feel safe that no boundaries are crossed? I mean, we not, we have some, we cannot touch the inside of the thighs. For, uh, uh, abuse survivors, I'm, I always ask, Mm, yes. Where and when and how? Mm, and exactly. is it okay? And you want it on top of the blanket or under the blanket? Or, you know. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you never know. Some people touching their forehead is really dangerous. And, you know. Yes. Well, yes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You don't exactly. Know. Or feet. Or yeah, feet. People yeah. Yeah. A, a trauma survivor can have a good life. Uh, after being traumatized or sexually abused. I mean, it's so often in the media, and I think in, in many people's opinion, you're kind of damaged. You're not function. You're not, I mean, it's, yeah. Well, here's can two, be the, so two big. answers. Two, yes, yes, two answers. One yes, is yes. that your brain and nerve system are, they call it neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm. In other words, they change throughout your lifetime. Mm. So it's that, that it's never over. Mm. Even when trauma was developmental, your nervous mm. system is capable of regrowing parts of the brain that shrunk because of trauma. Mm. Regrowing the neuro, the dendrites and the axons that need to. It can always do that for the rest of your life. Mm. Yeah. So okay. Then, yes. There's that. Yeah. Now, what was the second thought I had? Um, hopelessness hmm. is actually part of the memory. We okay. think it's about now and about the future, but it's actually what you were feeling then. Okay. So I treat it like any other feeling. Mm -hmm. Yes. I go. I'll be with you while you feel it. I don't try to talk people out of being hopeless. I say, of course you feel hopeless. It was hopeless. Mm. <laughs> yes, at that time. At that it time, was yes. yes. Yeah. And I've, I know when the light goes on in my clients, oh, this is about then. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, it must be kind yeah. of realization. Yes. Right, yes. and that's yes. not where I am now. Mm. Yeah, so it's always kind of connected. Yes. This right. feeling of hopelessness is actually an old feeling kind of way. Right, yes. but it's a feeling that hasn't been allowed. Mm. And it's going to keep going on until it's allowed mm. with and some kind of loving connection present. Yeah, it's going to. Thank you and so much. <laughs> yes. I'm sure we could talk for hours. We but. could. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, some okay. very nice answers. Yes. All right. Thank you.